All right, so here's my dilemma. I know it's silly, but I have uh, my desk here. I have my Xbox off to my side, my monitors, my keyboard, mouse. That's all lovely. The problem is this Xbox controller. Now, you would say I could just put it here, and it's kind of out of the way. But while I'm working throughout the day, I don't like just staring at my Xbox controller. Uh, one, it's tempting me to play. But also, um, I do use this mouse pad for more than just my keyboard. So if I don't work on something, I either have to push this like way out of the way so I can move my keyboard up far enough so I can actually use this mat here. Um, and then my Xbox controller is just like shoved off into the corner kind of awkwardly and can actually fall off. Um, so in an ideal world, I'd have some type of solution where I could attach this to my Xbox controller or uh, the con console rather. Uh, and I think that would look pretty sleek. And since I now have a 3D printer, I think I can actually make that happen. What's up guys, thanks for clicking on this video. My name is Nate Hibbert. I'm a graphic designer for a e-commerce business that I started with my brother a couple of years ago. And this year, my goal is to add 3D printing to my skill set. It's a little bit outside of the realm of the things I normally do, uh, but I think it fits in well with our business model. Now, I am by no means an expert in the 3D printing space. I'm just starting out on this journey, uh, but I always find it interesting to watch people's process. So I thought I would bring some of that to YouTube. Uh, and I also think there's value in being able to ask someone questions questions who's maybe one or two steps ahead of you. Uh, so if you're looking to get into 3D printing, especially if you're trying to use it as a side hustle and actually use it to make some money or add it to your business, uh, I think this is the right channel for you and I'd love for you to be able to ask me questions through the comments down below. In last week's video, I talked about the different softwares that I'm using for the 3D printer, and one of them was Fusion 360. Uh, and this week, that was where all of my attention and focus went into, uh, as I'm quickly learning that now that I have the actual technology, which is 3D printing, uh, I need the skills to be able to use this technology, and that in a big way is just 3D modeling. So I used the first part of this week just to get myself comfortable with Fusion 360, how to actually like open files, how to change the units, uh, all kind of the basic things, just watching a lot of YouTube tutorials, to be honest. And in the last few days, I've been able to actually tackle my very first project uh, inside of Fusion 360. Now, in future, I hope to be getting these projects from clients who are willing to pay for my skills. But before I'm quite ready to do that, I have to build my own confidence. Uh, and so I picked a project that would be something that would solve a problem for me. Uh, and this is less of a problem than a slight annoyance, but it was just something that I thought would be able to use my skills. Uh, and that was to find a place to put my Xbox controller. Now, I know, I know that's a very silly little thing to just find a place for this, um, but in the current state of the desk, if I just have it next to my keyboard or in front of my face, it can be tempting and bad for productivity. Uh, so I wanted to find a way to actually hang it on my Xbox. And so that's where my motivation for this week inside of Fusion 360 came from. While I had the motivation to jump right into Fusion and start designing, uh, looking at this blank canvas was a little overwhelming and I didn't really have a clear picture of what I wanted to design. Uh, so I went and looked for some inspiration. Thingiverse has quickly become one of my favorite websites to come for not only actual files that I can print out but also finding ideas uh, of what is possible so I found a lot of different type of Xbox controller holders um, but I didn't quite find one that looped onto the console itself like I wanted uh, which I thought was a good thing because it gave me a chance to actually create something new and unique uh, so I found this a specific controller holder um, that I thought had a good shape or way of holding a controller kind of upright but also on a slant so it'd be pretty snug in there uh, and so I use this as kind of the base idea of what I started to look for on other websites. I also went to uh, Etsy and started looking here. This is one that I found and just again taking some inspiration from uh, how this hung on the wall. I liked the way that it presented the controller and how this looked pretty upright. Um, but again, I didn't want to like drill into my wall or use any commando strips or anything. I just wanted to strap right onto the console. Uh, and so the last place that I went for inspiration to look was actually the Microsoft Store. Um, they have also these controller holders they're a little bit different as they're just meant to sit flat on a desk uh, but my idea again was to get it off of my desk uh, but I did again like this shape here and I would actually come back to this image uh, during the final stages of making my product to kind of use some of the design language uh, that I found in this product but that was the inspiration that I needed uh, so I could actually start designing inside of Fusion 360 but as I started designing I realized that I had never made anything where the dimensions in real life would actually matter uh, I've been making things like 
the sample Lego blocks to test all the different filaments that I was getting, uh, or this fun little octopus guy just to see some of the technology and how it worked. Uh, but none of that really depended on an exact measurement or even uh, using the calipers that I had bought uh, to see, you know, how things would line up in the real world. So I broke out my calipers, I went over to my Xbox and measured the thickness or how wide uh, I would have to make something that would be able to go over my Xbox. And this super exciting design was the first thing that I was able to make inside of Fusion 360. Uh, now, I know it doesn't look like much, but this would basically give me a good idea uh, if I could print something or type in real world measurements into Fusion 360, which that measurement was about 64 millimeters. Uh, so I could type that into Fusion 360, print it out and see if it would actually work over top of my Xbox. So I have my piece here, as you can see, it does actually fit over the Xbox. Uh, it was a little bowed out and wobbly now because I've been using this for uh, another project. But when I did first print this out, it fit over and slipped on almost perfectly. So while this was a really simple design, actually seeing this measurement uh, on the computer, on my calipers, and seeing that this could be printed out gave me the confidence to move on to my next design, uh, which was taking that same exact shape, but just slapping the controller holder portion of that onto it. And as you can see, I clearly took the inspiration from uh, both Etsy and that Thingiverse photos that I showed a little bit earlier, those products, and just kind of used uh, what I saw and replicated that for myself here. Uh, now the measurements were a little bit hard to dial in exactly um, but I thought the next step was just to print this out and see uh, if this would actually hold an Xbox controller and as you can see here it printed out it looks great it slips right over the Xbox console and I can fit my controller right in there. Uh, two things that I noted as soon as I printed this out and was able to get my hands on it with though is that the controller can slide left to right. Now it's not a huge deal, it's not like uh, you know I'm into my car and this is going to be sliding around, uh, but for me as someone who's trying to make a custom product that I really enjoy, uh, I just didn't like the idea that they could slide back and forth. The other thing that I noticed was back here there's this gap um, that I could very easily fill in with some more filament and so that was the next thing I wanted to do with these projects. So right back into Fusion 360 I went, I made this next file, um, which I addressed a few different issues actually that I had here. Uh, one, I made it a little bit thicker so it wouldn't slide around as much. Uh, the next thing was I added this chunk of um, filament here on the back end so it wouldn't slide uh, and it would just seem a little bit more custom fit for exactly what I was trying to use it for. Uh, I actually made this top uh, portion here a little bit thinner as well as I thought some more structural integrity would come from having this big chunk on the back here uh, and the very last thing is I cut out some of the back uh, of this um, the holder down here in the back corner just because I thought that was kind of a waste of material at this point in the project though I realized that if every time I made a new variation to the file inside of Fusion 360 I went to go print it uh, that I was just going to end up with a lot of extra things that weren't all that useful uh, I had already made these two and they were just kind of floating around the room uh, as you know extra pieces of uh, you know experiment they were definitely necessary to this project, but I didn't feel like having, you know, five or six of these things when I got completely done. Uh, so for this one, I kind of sat on it for a little bit and I was like, okay, what are some other possible things, uh, you know, that I could make changes to this variation before I go ahead and print it out so I'm not just wasting a ton of filament. And so after sitting on this design for a day, uh, I came up with this next file, which uh, made just a few adjustments. The first thing, as you can see, is I filled in this area here. Uh, I just thought this looked a little bit cleaner uh, and was kind of unnecessary just to have this weird sloping area. Uh, the next thing I did was I actually added a little bit of a lip to the front here that was arched. Uh, this was definitely pushing my Fusion 360 knowledge up until this point. I was basically making uh, a 2D a sketch uh, and pulling that out into a, th a third dimension but editing now this third dimension um, was a little bit of a challenge but I did figure out how to make this slope here uh, and that was kind of the point of this project was to stretch my knowledge and to push myself to learn some stuff like this. The very last thing that I did was as I was looking at uh, the way the consult is built is I realized that there's actually venting on top uh, that I would be covering up. Now I don't know how crucial it would be to cover just a few of these vents uh, but I thought why not take the challenge and try to figure out how to make a grid of uh, little holes that would line up with the grid that's on top of the Xbox. And so that's what I was able to do uh, with this third uh, iteration or kind of fourth iteration that I was going to print out. Uh, I think I also shortened the back here. Um, yeah, so I did that on the last one, but actually shortening the back here, uh, again, just to use less material where it's not necessary. 
So I felt I made enough changes to this variation now to go ahead and print it out. Uh, and as soon as I slipped it on my Xbox, I realized that I must have messed up some of the measurements somewhere because it doesn't sit 100% flush like I would have liked it. Um, so that automatically gave me time uh, and motivation to go back and make at least one more variation. Uh, but I was really liking how much more confidently uh, this held the controller in place and there's less room for it to slip around um, and just more centered, which I appreciated. Another thing that I do want to note uh, that I made a mistake of was the holes up top. It's probably hard to see on camera, uh, but the holes on the holder were a little bit smaller and closer together uh, than the actual holes of ventilation on top of the console. So that was something else I wanted to address inside of Fusion 360. So wasting no time with this variation, I went ahead and made that change. And again, I kind of sat on this for a day uh, to think about what are some other design language things that I could pull um, from the controller itself. So if you look, uh, I dressed the holes are a little bit different. I changed up some of the measurements uh, up here at the top. Uh, and then I also added in um, these lines at the top of the controller, or the holder rather, uh, that mimic the lines at the top of the controller, uh, kind of where the shoulder buttons are and made this a little bit more slanted back uh, and then I also added this line that goes around the entire uh, face of the holder uh, that kind of mimics some of the lines from the controller itself uh, so this was my first attempt at kind of stealing some design language um, from Microsoft and, and implementing it in my own design uh, something I definitely have to get a lot better at but for a first shot at it uh, I you know I thought it was a good practice and I'm not too ashamed of what I've made here uh, uh, which can be the case sometimes when I'm creating things. But like I said, just trying to build my confidence uh, and improve what I can do. So I know that was a lot of back and forth between Fusion 360 and what's going on in real life. Uh, and you guys can let me know how I did on that process. It's my first time doing anything like this. So I'm definitely open to uh, constructive criticism. Uh, but I just thought it would be cool to show the process going from something like this, uh, which was just to proof an idea, uh, you know, to see how my printer and all this stuff would work together, all the way to the final form factor uh, that I have here. Now that I've been using it for a couple of days and I'm really happy with it. It does exactly what I wanted to do, which is get the controller away, uh, kind of out of my line of sight, but also keeps things, you know, tight and needy uh, around my desk, which I also really appreciate. There's an absolute ton of stuff that I learned from doing this project, um, from you know how to use the software better, how to use my printer better, how to just think through this process a lot better. Uh, I think one of my big takeaways is that maybe I don't need to print <laughs> every version that I uh, you know make inside of the 3D modeling software, as now I have all of these prints that I don't really have any use for. Um, I'm really glad that I did it this time, but hoping in future that I can cut down on that. Um, or maybe just like printing out smaller portions. I printed out most of these at full size, uh, but if I was thinking about it, I could probably print the most like this size uh, and just make sure everything lined up the way that I wanted it to. Um, so just a lot of lessons that I'm learning through. Uh, if you're interested at all in this Xbox controller holder, this is the very first product that I'm listing on Etsy. Uh, if you'd like to go check that out, I'll put a link to that down below. Uh, and if you'd like to know how that Etsy journey is going, I'm definitely going to be making videos on that in the future. If you're excited about 3D printing and you want to learn more uh, about how you can go from taking this hobby and adding it to your business, there will also be links down in the description below. Uh, but until the next video, I will see you guys around.